So a few days ago, I just made a video. I made a flash cart out of an old Pokemon Crystal version. Um, while I was going through my stuff, I found a couple boards that, quite frankly, I thought I didn't have anymore. Um, for those who don't know, this is a FRAM, as in Ferris, um, as opposed to SRAM. This this is an MBC3 flash card that uses batteryless saves. Um, it's basically the same as what I made out of that Pokemon Crystal, except when your battery dies on this card, you don't lose your save. The only thing that happens is your clock stops ticking. Um, obviously, these ones are a little bit harder to make because the PCB is uh, completely unpopulated. But functionally, supposedly they're better. Uh, I like to make them out of these trade card hero carts. Uh, I have a whole stock of these things. They are dirt cheap and they have nearly all of the components that we need on the board. Um, just want to pop it in, make sure it works. Uh, but this is an MBC3 cart with real-time clock capability. And yeah, it boots just fine, so I'm sure this cart's fine. But these carts... Before anyone gets offended that I'm about to destroy another cart, um, these things are literally probably one of the cheapest carts that you can buy. Like, these things go for a dollar um, from Japan, of course, so you, you are paying shipping. But if you buy a whole bunch at once, they're practically a dollar a pop. So, to get the parts that I need, I'm just going to set the case aside for now. Uh, we need specifically this chip right here, the MBC chip, this chip right here, the, uh, I forget what it is, um, I'm pretty sure that's the power management chip for the SRAM, so I, I'm not 100% sure why we need it, but there's a spot for it on the board, so we're going to add it. Uh, we don't need any of these other components, but you can transfer them over if you want to. I'm going to be using new components because it's easier than uh, trying to swap this stuff around. Uh, I'm going to use hot air to desolder this, which means uh, the battery needs to be removed. I didn't check it, but it's probably dead, so I'm probably just going to throw it out. But... Once it's desoldered, I believe we can begin. Uh, again, we don't need these two chips. You can desolder them if you want, but it's not going to get you anywhere. Uh, again, breaking out the heat gun, so uh, headphone users. Here we go. I forgot to remove that tape, so it's probably going to shrivel up. pretty smooth. Yeah, again, I'm just going to leave all those components. You can even transfer over the uh, real-time clock crystal if you want. Uh, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to use a new one. I think it'll be just as difficult. Or, well, whatever. I have a bag full of them, is what I'm trying to say. And I put down some insulation this time so I don't melt my desk. I'm going to start off with one of these bad boys, because I know this works. I'm pretty sure I already have it flashed with a ROM, and it's nice and sticky because there's flux on the bottom and I didn't realize, so that's wonderful. Speaking of flux, I'm going to stick that on top of this, because when I start soldering this, I'm going to get flux everywhere. I don't want cleanup to be easy. Okay. 
So this, oops, I don't know why I'm capping that. I'm going to need it. This first chip that I'm soldering is in uh, AM29FO16. Ooh, hello. Focus. There we go. Uh, you can pick these up on AliExpress. I think you have to buy them in bulk, but it, I think it works out to about two bucks a pop or something. They're relatively cheap. These are two megabyte chips. And uh, as far as I can tell, the MBC3 chip, this one right here, only supports the uh, two megabyte chips anyway. If you go over that, you're not going to have a good time. Um, I tried, I actually did make one of these with a four megabyte chip. Or rather, that's what uh, my buddy Mr. HDR is working on, and that's one of these guys. I do have a newer revision. This is 1.3, and if you check his GitHub, I think he's currently at 1.4. Well, 1.3 doesn't work. These are these are bad. There's a short on a few pins somewhere. I forget. And this one in particular, the uh, solder mask ended up shifting, so I can't really use this anyway unless I am super careful with my soldering. But it is what it is. Anyway, let's see, let's bring this down, why not? So I want to try and line up one side. I'm trying to use solder that's already on the iron. Yeah, okay, that's down. And this other side already looks pretty much lined up. I think. Yep. I'm gonna add some more solder. By the way, if you're thinking of building any of these carts for yourself, you can get these in whatever color you want. I don't recommend white. It's super easy to burn the solder mask on these, and they look really bad once you burn them. Alright, I think that's soldered hard to tell. It's going smoother than usual. That looks soldered. And that looks soldered, so yeah, I guess we're soldered. Okay, next I'm going to do the MBC3 chip, which is this one up here. Pay attention to the dot. Um, I believe it's oriented with the text Normal. I'll just leave a blob in the center, it'll squish out. Yeah, so on this MBC3 chip, if we can focus, maybe. You see the dot is in the bottom left corner, but the text is normal. Yeah. So on the PCB, the dot was in the bottom left, which means we want the text normal. I know that's crooked, but I'll straighten it out. I just need to be able to see the... Uh... There we go. Mm, I shouldn't have soldered that one pin down with this so crooked.
Well, that's one way to do it. Okay. Just move it around with your iron and your tweezers. Okay. Got one pin from each side soldered, so I think we're good to anchor it down. Oh, I think I burned the uh, solder mask there. Or maybe just the flux. Hopefully just the flux. Right, next. To move on to this chip that I'm still not sure if we actually need. Again, the dot is in the bottom left corner while the text is up. It's not really being wasteful if we don't need this chip and using it anyway because it comes from the same PCB that we sourced the MBC3 chip from. So it either goes in this board or goes unused. All right, there we go. That one's easy. Next is the FRAM. You can order this off of AliExpress's the FM18W08SG. It's a little bit pricey, but it's the bee's knees. Oh, actually, before we solder this, we need to do one thing first. But I'll get the uh, I'll get the chip out. Well, we don't need to, but I think it'll be easier to do so. All right. The other thing we need to do, we need to solder a little OR gate, a little logic gate. You can get these off of DigiKey. Here's the. Uh, product number. You can pause or just look up the bill of materials. Just need one of them. I have 10 here, I think. Um, you want to be careful. I think these are... No, those are the same. So I have way more than 10. <laughs> but that's okay. I thought I was out of these. Apparently I'm not. So this is what enables the uh, memory chip, the FRAM chip, to work with the MBC3 chip. goes in that bottom, and I wasn't paying attention. The uh, dot is in the top left. So, if you can see that, the dot is super small. It's, uh, it says YG on this, and then there's a dot in the corner.
Oh, it's so much easier to solder. For reference, um, I have a cart in my uh, wall of shame here, or pile of shame, I guess. This is the part number for the original that they recommended. You can see side by side how much bigger this one is. Well, let's just say it's a lot easier to solder the bigger one to the footprint design for that cart part, whatever. Okay, now we can do the memory chip. I like paste flux. Some people like flux pens. Some people like liquid flux. I like this stuff. Okay. This is Ramtron. Now this one's a little bit different. Um, the dot on the PCB is in the top left, but the chip itself doesn't have a dot on it. It just has this little half circle. Uh, that's It's basically the same thing. So they both go on top. And this one is super easy to solder. Watch me fuck it up anyway. Speaking of fucking it up, I'm not getting any solder on the pad. There we go. When soldering parts like this, it's easier to just get a big old blob of solder on your iron and roll that across all the pins. As long as you have plenty of flux, it'll uh, it'll go where it needs to go. All right. So now we just need to do all the surface mount parts and then the battery uh, thing, the coin saw retainer. I'm going to take a quick break, um, let the camera take a break, let the iron take a break, and uh, I'll be back in, well, just a few seconds, I guess. So I, while I was taking a break, I decided to clean up all the excess flus, flux, excuse me, because I figure while I'm soldering these surface mount components, or the rest of the resistors and capacitors and shit, I probably won't need any flux. And I'm kind of glad I did, because otherwise I wouldn't have noticed this. Uh, let's see if we can focus. I actually missed a few pins. One on this MBC chip. Two on this chip. You can see there's still gold on the pad, which means no solder made it down. And there is actually a short on this chip. Uh, it doesn't matter so much because the short is on these last two pins and these AM29 FO16 chips. One, two pins, one, two pins, one, two pins, and one, two pins. There are eight pins total on this chip that are not connected to anything. So it does not matter if these last three pins are shorted together. They don't, the last two pins don't do anything. So if they're shorted to the last pin that does do something, it's, it's still fine. Um, but I'm going to try and clear that short anyway because I can. I don't like it. Um, but otherwise, I did get this RAM chip soldered down. It is a little bit crooked, but there's not much I can do about that without hot air. And, I mean, nothing's shorted, so it should still work fine. So, I think we're going to just leave it as is. Um, but first, we need to... Fix the, the pins that I missed. There we 
go. I'll have to clean that up a little, but it's okay. Oh, that's not going to work without flux. Let's try some of this stuff, even though I'm going to have to clean it up again because it's going to get under the chip. There we go. And this is just a flux pen, Kester 951 flux. It's aight. Like I said, I still prefer the uh, paste. I just had to keep fucking with it, didn't I? I'm done, I swear. Okay, so next up, next up, uh, we need to solder down. That's the gate, I'm done with that. That's the ram, I'm done with that. I need that last. Okay. Excuse me while I uh, wrestle around with some plastic here. So I've already got the components for this. Uh, the new version of this cart only uses, or instead of using 1206 components, it uses 0805. And for those who are new to surface mount components, um, no offense, but you probably won't be soldering this anyway, so I don't care if I offend you. Um, this, honestly, 0805 are a lot easier to solder than 1206. Not only that, 0805 components are cheaper than 1206 components. Um, just between economies of scale and the fact that less material goes into making the part. Anyway, this is a 10k resistor. Per the bill of materials, this car only needs one of those. So I clipped one of those off, set it down, and this one goes to R2. My point regard oh, it fell right where it needs to go. Neat. My point about the uh, resistors, or the sort of these small components here, is that they're small enough that you need to use tweezers anyway. Like as far as them being easier to solder. Yeah, they're small enough that you need to use tweezers anyway, so it's not like their size is an advantage but they don't fit very well. They're harder to get positioned. I don't know. I, I just, I prefer 0805. Or even smaller because apparently I'm a madman. Okay, next I have 1K ohm. We need just one of these as well. And I say 0805 is cheaper, but these things are still cheaper as frig. Um, I mean, literally, you can get if they're fractions of a penny each, depending on the capacity or uh, um, count you get. Not having a good time getting this out of the plastic. Okay. That was what, 1K? That goes to R3. Never done that before. Okay. Next up is surface mount 330K. Also just need one. This one I clearly did not buy that many of. 
These ones are probably pricey. Or I just figured 330k. I'll never need them for anything other than these flashcards. And this goes to R1. Oh, I think it might be easier if I do C4 first. But, oh well. It's the order these are in. Okay, next we have ceramic capacitor 0.1 UF. We need three of five of these. We're just testing you, all. Uh, the first three go on C1, 2, and 3, and then the last two go on C6 and 7. Any components are optional, as in, if you really need to get this thing out of the door, skip these ones. It'll probably work fine without them. But, it'll work better with them, so. Okay, C1, C2, C3, so yeah. And then C6 and C7. Well, that one's awful. Better. I hate it, but better. Another thing with the smaller components, I'm, I'm going to keep going on and on about that, so if you're getting sick of it, might as well just turn off the video now. Um, if you get them crooked, like how I've got several of these, you can usually hit both pads at once to solder it back down. You can't really do that with these big ones unless you have a super big ass tip. Like, let me try this one. Oh, no. I got it, but it's kind of difficult. I'm trying to go back and forth between the two. It's awful close to that flash chip, but it's not touching, so it's fine. If I had to retouch up any of those joints, though, I'd definitely remove that big ass capacitor.
All right. That's those five. Next, we have this 15 PF capacitor. We need two of them. And you can probably guess which, where they go, based on the number of pads left. That almost ended in disaster. Oh, I just realized, I think my hand was covering that shot. I'm sorry. I do try to be courteous when I can. I'm sure y'all click on these videos to actually watch them and not to stare at the back of my hand. Cool, 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 cool. I gotta clean up all this flux eventually, but at least it's just surface mount stuff and not like whole globs of the shit. Oh my god, that is way too many. Okay, I just dumped out a whole pile of these things. Give me one sec. Alright, so. Next are the crystals. This is what actually does the, keeps track of the time. Already got one on the desk. And again, you can pull this from the original cart to solder this. I'm just going to get solder on both these pads. And I don't know how to grab this thing. That'll work. It ain't perfect, but that's okay. I installed it crooked because I'm going to have to bend it down anyway. Don't want to touch that capacitor, but you don't want it right at the top. These carts physically do not fit within the shell if the capacitor is all the way up. So, it is what it is. All right. Oh, wait, no, I need that bound. Okay. Okay, so I think I already have Pokemon Prism Flash to this because that's my go-to test ROM. But it boots, so that's a good sign. Noise. Okay. We're gonna reflash this thing though because that's gonna take forever. I just dumped my Pokemon Crystal. We're gonna use Pokemon Crystal in particular, oops, because that one has a nice quick intro. We'll do Flash MBC3 Cart Game Boy ROM PM Crystal. That one. Oh, that old thing was out of focus. I'm sorry. But that's going to flash real quick. And then we'll test it out. See what happens. If all goes well, and I think it will, 
I'll pop it in my Game Boy, we'll test it out, and then all we have left is to solder on the battery. Or rather, battery holder. So, I'll go ahead and get that ready. I have here, oops, these battery retainers. So you can get the, no, you gonna focus? There we go. These things here, this is what they look like. I wanted to use tabbed batteries because at the time I had a bunch and because you could use higher capacity batteries, but I no longer have a bunch. Oh. Sorry, dropping shit, waiting for that thing to finish flashing anyway. Oh, that's done. Just kidding. So, Nintendo logo, that's excellent. Do a new game. I think I'm a boy. It is entirely too late, way past my bedtime. I'm setting it to the actual time, by the way. Just because it's easier to keep track of. I gotta replace the volume pot in this thing. <laughs> I can't tell. I'm trying to turn it down. But it's nice and crusty. Yes, yes, Professor Oak, I know. I will be Muckle. I think I'm ready. And we will save. And just so you, you know, proof, no battery. Of course, the real-time clock isn't going to work because there's no battery, but it is what it is. Any normal cart, you would have lost your save by now. Bazam! I like them apples. Cool. So let's get a battery in here, huh? Hopefully before the camera shuts off. I apologize if it uh, cuts us off. I think we'll be good for another couple minutes, though. And as I say that... Oh shoot, before I solder this down, um, I had quite a few problems on my other carts with the batteries making contact. The gold pad in the center is kind of recessed underneath the solder mask. The solder mask does not have a negligible thickness, so my solution to that was to take a small length of copper tape Snip this off. And if we peel this off, da, da, da. I think this is a little bit too long, but I'll make it work. I'm just going to fold this up on itself. Leave just a little bit sticky. Stick that top part down like that. Just trying to fold over that edge. I think that should solve all our problems. Every single one of them. 
and you can solder the battery holder on like that if you want but don't because you'll never get your battery in and when you're soldering it don't hold it it gets hot well don't hold it with your bare fingers protect them fingies This thing sinks heat like nobody's business. There we go. Nice big blob. Nice big blob, excellent. Now, got a new energizer, because that's what I have. Deal with it. CR2025. They do make 2032 coin cell holders, but they don't fit in here and in the case. That goes in there. It's super tight, but it is what it is. It goes in there. That closes up. Just got to put your screw in and clean up that flux. Well, not in that order. There we go. I think I'll let that leave. Oh, no. Never mind. It'll take over while it's on anyway. It just ticked over to 134. But there we go. That's how you make one of these guys. And you can flash it over to any 2 megabyte ROM, Pokemon ROM hack that you want. And it'll keep track of time and everything. And batteryless saves. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.